this yeah. information works for any brand or manufacturer of seat. See, it makes me feel comfortable that Morgan's doing this because I know he can fix it. Actually, oh, actually. You're in, dude. Uh, I'm in. Not comfortably, <laughs> but I'm in. The inner workings of a suspension seat. Hardcore toy stuff. That might not sound right. Eh, it could work. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, so today, Morgan and I are going to be talking about seats. Not me so much, mainly this guy, because, you know, big brain over there. Um, Just the head. <laughs> Morgan's gonna be telling you guys about the difference between these seats. We've kind of gotten a lot of questions about why running a suspension seat or a non-suspension seat might be better for a different type of application. And Morgan's gonna kind of tell you guys about that. All types of off-road applications, right? Uh, these seats can be used in both with like from rock crawler to ultra four to pre-runner to overland to trophy truck to pre-runner to our freaking RC car. What the hell? <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to a <laughs> rally car to all that stuff. PRP has been our homies for years. Um, before we were Terra Crew, they believed in who we were. Starting off with like our buddies, the Eisenhowers and Parsons and Blake and all the rest of the guys of the crew, they seen something in us that a lot of other companies didn't. Literally, nobody would return our emails. Nobody would hit us back up. Nobody believed in any of the projects that we wanted to do. And we're so proud to be affiliated with somebody who believed in us from the beginning. They're the reason why we're here being able to create all this awesome content. The cool thing about this is that these seats and this information that Morgan's gonna go over with you guys basically applies to any type of seat out there. So it's not specific just to PRP. There's a composite style seat or a shell seat and there's a suspension style seat. So whether it's PRP or someone else, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that do both. You know, obviously the, the shell seat or the composite seat is, you know, it's quite obvious that there's a, a shell backing it and that's its main structure and it's all one piece. Composite meaning like this could be carbon, this could be fiberglass, Kevlar, um, that's usually what they are. So I think fiberglass is your common one and then there's always like an upgrade where you can get carbon fiber. Uh, and there is a couple Kevlars out there too. So I don't think a drag race car would be considered a composite or a shell seat, but it is one big nasty thing of aluminum. So we'll leave that out of here. The suspension seat is, you know, it lives up to its name too. These things consist of, you know, like a nylon rope or string system. This is a similar material as a, like a trampoline would have. So it, it has give and suspension, you know, hence suspension seat. So we can kind of cover the general uses for these things uh, and what applications you'd want to run a suspension seat versus a composite shell seat. So we're gonna actually going to be going over the suspension seat first, being that it's kind of like more of like a broader application. Yep. Right. We'll, we'll cover what you can use that in, what's the primary purpose of this thing, its construction, and just its general use first before we do this guy. This cushion itself is just the cushion. It doesn't make it the suspension seat itself. So Morgan, you wanna show them what yeah, makes the suspension seat? Most suspension seats are just, they have a general padding here. They have some padding in the back, but this isn't, this isn't as firm as this. This is just Velcro. But again, if you look, that's really similar to like an outdoor trampoline. Is it red? <laughs> I mean, that's the best reference I have. And then, you know, there's a series like a, a nylon strings in here. I don't know if we can get to them, but everything kind of works as one. Where you can feel that and you can see there's a system in here and that's all helping make it a suspension seat. This is all a net that kind of goes through. I think what we can do, why don't we undo this and we'll take this whole thing apart. It makes me feel comfortable that Morgan's doing this because I know he can fix it. Oh yeah. The inner workings of a suspension seat. So you can see instead of a composite seat, you can see that there's a, a chromoly frame in here, tube frame. Then you have your basic padding on all your hot spot areas. And then this padding, but what is really crucial is that suspension area. And you can really see it here. You can see it in the shoulder area where the bolstering is on the shoulder. And you can see it down here. You know, and everything everything works with itself. So everything's doing its own thing here. 
and that's all tied in. So, you know, if you have impact, especially just like a vertical impact, then the whole seat's going to work with itself to kind of pull it in the right ways to, to give you more comfort and suspension. Some of the primary uses for a suspension seat right off the bat would be like daily driver stuff, rock crawler, Jeep, slower speed stuff where, you know, you don't, you're not doing like high speed G outs and impacts. Um, you're not doing a lot of big side loads, anything at race pace. These things are real dialed for daily drivers, something you can get in and out of. If you have people that are, you know, different sizes, say you have someone that maybe is a little thicker than someone else, you can still get in that same seat and be comfortable. Composite seat will be very fixed shell, you know, and, and the comfort level is going to be down a little bit. These are great for in, in a vehicle where you'd be in and out of it. You're not going to spend a huge amount of time going through rough stuff all the time. What are some other applications you can like overland stuff? Um, Jeeps side by sides. Those are pretty, you know, optimal situations for having a suspension seat and especially like in a something that doesn't have that much travel. It's going to give you a little more, you know, support when you hit something hard. And on the financial side, these seats are uh, more affordable, um, generally, with all types of companies. They're great for way more applications than a composite seat. Some people prefer the feeling of a composite seat over a suspension seat, but this is just, you know, your, this is your optimal comfort level is a suspension seat. With these, you can, you know, everything on here is serviceable. So if you wanted to get some older seats or you have old seats that are in your, your car, and you want to just do a check on them or they feel uncomfortable and they're just there something's not right or you feel unsure about them or you pick up something that doesn't look the best you can take that thing apart or you can send it back to whoever made it and they can go through it they can check all the suspension areas they can check all the padding you know this is your lumbar they can see if the lumbar is still good you know they can do refoam the whole thing this is all just you know very generically stuck in here so it's not, it's not the end of the world. And on top of that, like same with your bottom cushion, you know, this is just foam under here too. So this whole thing can be serviced, it can be gone through, and you can literally refresh seats back to brand new. So we're gonna, we're gonna transfer over and go to the composite shell seat and uh, go over the details with that. Now we have the composite seat up here. Uh, You've heard James and I both say shell or composite, but it literally is a shell, right? So this is an alpha seat. It's fiberglass under there, composite fiberglass. So, you know, you can see it's just one big containment. Nothing moves, super rigid, not really heavy. Weight comparison, definitely lighter, but there's not a lot of moving parts like the suspension seat has. It's just a shell containment seat. The bolsters are high, obviously there's a lot more shoulder bolster, you know, next to your, your shoulder area. Your hips and your thighs are locked in. Um, these are optimal for high speed, high load, you know, race truck stuff, hardcore toy stuff. That might not sound right. Eh, it could work. Stuff that goes fast, just the more extreme vehicles would want to run something like this where you are contained. When you sit in these things, you don't move much at all. You don't have, you know, an option of sliding around, going up and down. You, you know, you have a lot of travel usually in vehicles like this where, you know, the, the car soaks up things and you feel everything. When you're driving with these, you feel them. You feel the car. You're actually mounted to the vehicle yeah, in you, a sense. Yeah, there's a lot more feedback yeah. where you, you notice, you know, you can, you can drive the car for what it is and you don't have that suspension kind of going around. There's different manufacturers. Uh, they're all similar in their design as far as their construction. This thing coming apart, it wouldn't, I don't need to show you guys anything. There's foam here. This is removable. Same kind of deal then. Yeah, you can see it's like just yeah. the shell itself. So you can feel it. That's straight to the shell. There's no suspension. There's no bungee kind of cord kind of thing, right? Yep. Like no trampoline kind yep. of setup. But um, you could kind of see how thin it is too. It's no more a than shell. a quarter. Yeah. The only difference with the suspension seat is that, you know, as you jump on a trampoline, you know, and say say you G out on something and you fully compress the truck or the car and you bottom out. If you're jumping on trampoline and you have, you know, you want to boost someone, you double bounce them. <laughs> 
You know, and it's the same where when you compress the car, if you have suspension in this thing, you're really double compressing and you're accelerating the compression even more instead of just being fixed in part of the vehicle, just like on a trampoline if you boosted someone. The shell seat is going to provide you just with a raw experience of just the car and the chassis and doing what it needs to do. But mind you, that's for an application that's a high performance vehicle, high travel, capable of race speeds, capable of race pace. Um, you're in there and you're fixed in there and you're, you know, you're it's helmeted up. It's business. Yeah. Bro. You're flying. You, you know, most applications where you're running a suspension seat, you just, you're not going to get up to that pace and up to that speed and be doing, you know, setting the car up for the impact that this shell seat is prepared for. The thing we want to kind of transition to and cover is we'll get the seats side by side and show the mounting points and the locations or the methods on, on mounting each seat because they are different. The composite seat obviously has a different style than the suspension seat, so I want to get them both up here to look at. Here we have three different seats. We have shell guy, we have side-by-side -side guy, and we have suspension guy with a low cut. So what's going on here is just we're going to look at all the mounting locations on these things to tab to the chassis. First, the suspension seat has generic vertical style tabs with a horizontal bolt. This is your classic suspension seat style tab. Most all seats kind of have this same layout. I don't know if the spread is the same with all of them. Like this one already looks pretty long and pretty spread out, but it's the same vertical style with a horizontal bolt. Pretty easily said is how you do it. You know, if you had like a tube here, you would just build your tabs off and bolt through. Composite seat, shell seat, has a vertical mounting surface with a horizontal bolt but there is no vertical tabs like on a suspension seat. There's nothing here. So what this gets is a bracket. Either you tab it, like on James's truck, we have a vertical tab that captures this with a horizontal bolt, or you actually buy the universal bracket. So you see here, this is a slider system, and this has your bracket for a composite seat on here. And you can see there's kind of different levels of adjustment where you can adjust the angle of the seat. But these holes, would be your mounting points for the shell, for the composite seat. And then, like I said, there's a horizontal surface with a vertical bolt going through. So, you know, you could either mount it to a slider system like this, or you could mount to just directly to a chassis with tabs on it. Next up is the side-by-side -side seat, and this is kind of the generic mounting position for them. They have built-in straps here. The hardware would go up. There's a nut welded on the top. So you just drive a bolt into there and capture this thing on the surface. So on my truck, which is right here, um, we decided to go with the Razor UTV seats in the back um, because it's like a mid-sized truck. Um, it's smaller back there, kind of mini-ish, you mini know? Mini mid-size, yeah. Yeah, so like a Tacoma Frontier. And the reason why is because the size of this is smaller, but um, it still fits the same size person, right? So it still is, it, it has, the packaging is different, which Morgan talks about a lot and it kind of works out really you well. Can really also with this one too you can really see the suspension stuff in here. I mean it's almost doubled up so I don't know the inner workings on the side but I can feel some of that but this is you know cross hatched here with the suspension and the, the straps. Right. I actually got this idea from Eric SoCal Suspension. Um, he has the orange Tundra. He actually runs these seats in the back of his uh, extended cab uh, Tundra. Tundra. Yeah. And it works out great. Our, our Shia was back there. I've sat in back there before. I'm about six foot, so it works out really well. And it's just like, it, it's just more space and you still have the comfort and the safety. Next up, we just wanna show how these were utilized in James's truck front and rear. So obviously we favored the containment seat for the passenger and driver. The rear occupants, which are primarily gonna be his kids, have these side-by-side -side seats, which obviously there's two different forms of mounting here. So I'll kind of show you the best we could do with his truck and his packaging. Yeah, my kids and also my desert son, Evan. <laughs> I kind of won't be able to fit back there. I won't be able to fit back there. We're going to just fit this thing in the back of James's truck. I'm not going to like final it in there. There's some cavities that aren't closed on the sheet metal down there, so it'll be easier for me to get the bolts in right now. There's a full skid plate on the bottom of it. Usually with this seat, since the bolts for the side-by-side -side seat have to go in from the bottom, I designed it where you do it from the bottom of the chassis. So that's why it's kind of an unorthodox way for a truck, but it's what works best for our application. Alrighty, so you can see in the rear of this thing, there's 
four uh, horizontal tab and mounting locations. One, two, three, four. The bolts are gonna go through the bottom. They're gonna capture the seat, which sits, sits here. And uh, I'm just gonna kinda hand tighten them just to show you the platform where it sits and how it's packaged in here. So I'm gonna set that guy there. All right, so we got enough on here to kind of see. I just got those outside bolts in. Um, you can see how they're horizontal tabs. You can see that the bolts are in there vertical, horizontal tab, and same as would be in a side by side. So that's the mounting for that one. Okay, so real life, real life <laughs> scenario. I got my camera. Hold on, and... disclaimer. This is not built for large dudes. Yeah. Or dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think he's gonna. Yeah, Wait, actually, dude. actually. You're in, dude. Ugh, I'm in. Not comfortably. <laughs> but I'm in. I'm no, in. This is definitely for. Kids. Yeah, this is definitely for. Put a little sticker on the door jam that child. has an age limit. Yeah. You know, or a height limit a height. for a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just put the height limit. I mean, hey, I don't know why you guys are crying. <laughs> you're pretty good back there. I don't see what the big deal like is. Um, like no, you know what? It, it, it does feel a little tight. Um, I mean, I'd probably say anybody like. It's better than under what was here. I mean, like, again, I'm not going to be, like, mobbing hard with people back here. I mean, my kids, if they're strapped in, yeah, we'll go a little faster. But just, like, Can-Am speed, just having some fun. I think you when can... I'm doing serious business, I'm not going to be running people back here, dude. It's just the height thing, so I think you can go at full at full pace with the right height occupants in the back. Okay, so with the composite seat on James's truck, the packaging is maximum tight in here. So there's these vertical tabs like we talked about. Um, this picks up on the seat, right? So your your actual composite and your shell goes in here, and then you have your your horizontal bolt with a vertical tab. Uh, one, two, three. This is a two-piece tab just for serviceability. So you know you have four pickups like that. We're gonna go show you the other side that's already in the car. So here you can see passenger side, um, same deal. Four pickups, vertical tab, horizontal bolt right into the right into the shell. Um, this is just a fixed seat. There's no sliders, fixed position. Nothing needs to change, but you can see there's just, you know, real close tolerances on everything. And everything was built and packaged exactly for this seat. So that's what we had to work with here, but that's just kind of an example of how you do this thing with a custom tab versus a pre-fabricated and pre-built bracket that you can get from the supplier of the seat. We packaged the larger fella, more man than I am, to, uh, <laughs> Try the back seat out, which is for small occupants. Now we're gonna go with the composite shell seat in the front of James's truck, which is built for normal people, you know? Yeah. You you fit with normal people too though. Yeah. You know? Kinda. Alright, so let's check this out here. Oh, oh already <laughs> much easier. I love that there's no Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's probably a little better on you. Yeah, way better. Lots I love that there's no like crazy door bars. This works. Wonderfully, yeah, for sure. Body, Even for it being a small cab, I'm like, I mean, like having a position where my my, my knee kind of rests on yeah. the firewall, and then like having this to where I can still brace myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. like There'll be more down there for your feet too. So. Really nice. So that should wrap up, you know, some key information about a composite or a shell seat and a suspension style seat. Um, both of the seats have their homes and their places in the off road and motorsports industry, and I hope that this kind of gets you guys enough information to make the right choice. And if there's someone else, or, you know, you have a buddy or you guys are trying to figure out what style seat to run for your project or whatever you have, you can kind of use this as a reference and a starting point to go in the right direction. This information works for any brand or manufacturer of seat. So this is just specific about suspension seat and composite seat. It's not just about PRP or any brand. It's just basic knowledge on the type and style and mechanism of the seat that you're looking for. So I hope you guys like these informational episodes. We're definitely gonna be bringing you guys some more in the future. Um, the next episode we're actually gonna be doing with Morgan is on harnesses. So how to properly mount them so you can keep yourself safe. So we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for checking out the episode. Please subscribe, like if you guys have any questions, if you guys would like to share this. Again, if you know anybody like Morgan said that's gonna be purchasing a seat and wants to know the differences, um, send this to them. Help us share the content. Thank you, guys.